this time I'm going to talk to you about category system instructing. Um, I've been a category system instructor since 2018. Um, it's the first instructor rating that I went to go and get. Before that, I was an FS coach and actually listening to Vic and Beck's talk, I agree that being, becoming an FS coach is a really, really good first step to set you up for loads of different instructor ratings and just flying in general. I think it's a really good thing to do at 200 jumps. The other nice thing, having listening to their talk, is there's some good stuff that's similar in my talk. So we're all on the same page about being an instructor. Um, since getting my CSI rating, it's then also laid some really good foundations for going on and get, getting other ones such as an AFF instructor. So this talk, I'm going to talk about what category system is because not everybody's fully aware of what it involves um, and how to become a category system instructor and what it's like to be one. So what is the category system? So it's also referred to as RAP, so RAM Air Progression or static line, because it uses a static line to open a parachute for the first few jumps. It is one of the routes to getting your A license. Now, some people might have really fond memories of wearing their orange boiler suits and doing their millionth DRP. Um, and some people who's done AFF might just recognize the fact that there were other students getting out at three and a half thousand feet and it all looked kind of scary on their way to altitude. So category system versus AFF. Why would you choose one over the other? The end result is exactly the same. You get your British Skydiving A licence. You've learnt the same skills, you've had the same information given to you. You're still that same A licence skydiver. Category system is pretty common um, with uni students. A lot of uni clubs bring their students and do um, static line. And that's because it's a bit more of a pay-as-you-go system. Some people argue that it's cheaper. Actually, when you do the maths, it probably works out around the same cost. But AFF, you tend to have to pay up front, and uni students prefer to pay one jump at a time. It fits their budget a little bit better. It can take a little bit longer doing getting your license through category system. I learned through um, static line. It took me a year and a half to get my license, so it took me quite a while. But along the way, you spend lots of time on the drop zone. You absorb even more information and you meet a really good bunch of people. There's a, lot, a good sense of camaraderie as you're going through the static line progression. So just going to recap, go through what the categories actually are, because again, if you're not familiar with it, it can all be a little bit alien. So the category one, the first one, oh, I've lost a slide. The first one is ground school. The very <laughs> first one is all your teaching on the ground. So you go through everything you need to know from how to put a parachute on, how to put your rig on, to malfunction procedures. The lessons that need to be taught in the ground school are set out by British Skydiving. They have set lessons that need to be taught. How you teach them and what you put in each lesson, the content of them, is kind of down to your drop zone. So as an instructor, when you're learning to become a CSI, you're going to talk, talk to your drop zone, look at the lesson plans, learn what's in them, and practice how to deliver those lessons. And that's something that you're going to get examined on when you go on your course. Category two is their first few static lines, so their first few jumps. Oops. So this is getting used to getting out the plane into a really big arch. The static line opens their parachute for them. As an instructor, this is where all your hard work on the ground kind of comes into play, and you can see kind of people go from, again, being really nervous in the plane. I really like helping people get through their first jumps because when they land, they've got such a big grin on their face. It makes it really, really rewarding. The next step is dummy rip pulls. So this is where they're still with the static line. Static line is going to open their parachute for them. But this time they get out, they do a really good exit, really good arch, and then they pretend to pull their own parachute. So they've got a dummy pull, so like a like, red flag that as your instructor, you can see that from the plane as they pull it. They have to do those three good ones in a row. So they have to show that they can do that consistently before we take that static line away from them. Because the next step, category four and five, these are their first few free fall jumps. Right? And this is, I would say, almost as scary for them as is the instructor. So you're kind of spend a lot of time on the ground with them with their brief. You're pretty confident they've been getting out of the plane in a good position. As I said, they've been really consistent with their DRPs. Now it's kind of time to, to let them loose and pull their own parachute. They have to do first two 
free fall, do five second delays, and then they can move on and do two good 10 second delays. The next step is category six. This is the 15 second delay. And I like this one because this is where students are really gonna start to feel like they're skydiving. They're in free fall for long enough to start to relax. They even find that they're starting to transition down off the hill into that belly to earth position that they've probably seen in loads of videos and pictures. It's also when we're gonna start to get them to learn to use their altimeter meter in free fall. Up until this point, they've been counting. If you've not done static line, you've probably heard them all chanting, arch oh, thousand, two thousand, on a Saturday or Sunday morning. So this time, they're now gonna start re using their altimeter. meter. Then we're gonna start teaching them some, some more skills. They've shown us they've got that really good foundation. So we're gonna start teaching them turns. Important thing with turns is it's actually head in control. It's not just that it's a fun thing to do when you're in the sky. We're teaching them more control over their body. We're teaching them how to stay nice and still on a heading so they can be nice and still as they pull their parachute. At this point, as an instructor, we might start to follow the students out as well. As a static line instructor, you can't interfere with the student. So you're there to watch it. If you've got a camera, it's really good because you can use that for their debrief. We can't give them signals. We can't help them out if they're struggling. So it's really important to spend loads of time with them on the ground to really make sure they understand what's expected of them in the sky. And then the next few steps are going to be all the other stuff. So we've got back loops and tracking. Uh, we've got dive exit, unstable exits. It takes a few more jumps to get through them as well. Um, it's a little bit reversed category system in AFF, and it's something to be aware of as an instructor. With AFF, you get through your levels, and then you have 10 consolidation jumps, where you start to jump on your own in free fall. You have an instructor in the plane looking after you, and they'll check you on the ground. But you really start to get a bit more independent over those 10 jumps. With static line, or category system, it's almost a little bit the other way around. To start off with, you can have one instructor and 12 students on a ground school. Here at Langer, we can have eight students in the aircraft. So it's not really that one-to-one -one tuition until we get to these later levels. These last few jumps, you tend to have your instructor jump out with you. You've got much more one-to-one -one time with them. And I think as an instructor, it's really important at this point to help the student become more independent so that by the time they've got their license, they're kind of just as confident and happy that they can get in the plane on their own as an AFF student. So why become a static line instructor? One of the things that I start what, that motivated me to become a static line instructor was I really liked FS coaching. I did a lot of it beforehand. I loved seeing people progress, spending time with people on the ground, and also working out how to explain stuff to people that had kind of become a bit more second nature to me. So there's lots of motivation there. How to become a static line instructor. British skydiving requirements, uh, 200 jumps and two years in the sport. You also need a few other things. You need a recommendation from your chief instructor. So your chief instructor kind of has to give you the seal of approval to say, yes, I think you'll be a good instructor and off you go on a course. You need to have an instructor's medical, a packing certificate, and this is different to your packing endorsement for your B license. So if you've been putting off your tangle test for the last few hundred jumps, now's the time to go get that done. You're going to start off by going on a basic instructor course. And in order to do that, there's a proficiency card, which involves kind of um, going through practicing lessons, practicing briefs. You even have to do a static line jump yourself. So you get, make sure you've got all those ticked off as well. And again, remember that what's in the ops manual is actually the minimum requirement. So you need 200 jumps. It's the same point at which you could get your FS coach rating. When I went for my CSI rating, I had about 400 jumps. And I think having had that little bit extra time where I could have been a coach and started to kind of ease into that role in the sport definitely helped when I went on my CSI course. Also, lots of time on the drop zone. You learn much more about the ins and outs of how things are ran, which is really important as an instructor. So the CSBI course. The BI course is about five days, normally Monday to Friday. And in the course, you're going to give two lessons. The nice thing is you get to choose the first lesson you give. So whichever one is the most confident, that you're most confident with. They'll then tell you what the next lesson they want you to deliver is. You then give them a brief. You also now give them the canopy training progression brief. There's an exam. 
And you also get to do a little bit of dispatching if the weather's good, which is really fun. You tend to dispatch the other people on the course or other jumpers that are around the drop zone. The BI course was less scary than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's, you still have to kind of work hard and achieve the aims and show them that you've got the potential to become a good instructor. Um, but you get loads of advice and help from the examiners. You sit in on each other's debriefs and they're going to tell you what was really good and why it was really good and what could do with some work and how to work on it. So you get lots and lots of advice as you go through it. Then, if you pass that course, you're going to end up on a probationary period. It's usually six months, but can be up to a year. This is your opportunity to practice, to practice as much as you can. I see it as on the BI course, they've kind of looked at you and they say, you've got the potential to be a really good instructor. It's within this six months that you need to go and work to kind of build that, unlock that potential and um, get ready for your exam course. It's gaining confidence. The first few times you're working with real students and dispatching real students, you're going to feel like a duck on water, trying to be cool, calm and collected for your student, but underneath your heart's going to be racing. All right. You're going to be under supervision to start with. Your CI will get one of the more experienced instructors on the drop zone to be there with you to help you. Um, my biggest bit of advice for this bit is the more you do, the easier it gets. I think that's the same for most things. If you think back to your first few jumps that you've ever done, to start off with, they might not have been the most comfortable things ever. You might have been quite nervous. I know I used to sit in the plane and think, oh, I don't want to do it again, but I'm in the plane now, so I've got to go. And then slowly, over time, you do more, you kind of force yourself to go through it, and you get more relaxed, more happy, more confident with it. The more confident you are, the better an instructor you can become for your, instru for your students. You also have another proficiency card. This one, there's lots of stuff around teaching ground schools, again, giving more briefs and dispatching students. Um, so making sure you're filling out that. As I said, the more you can do in this probationary period, the easier the exam course is going to be. The exam course is a similar structure to the basic instructor course, and it's about five days. Again, you give two lessons and a brief. You've got the canopy training brief. You've got the exam. You've got the dispatching. So it's fairly similar, but there's definitely a different kind of feel to it this time. It feels much more like an exam course that you're there to work really hard. You're there to show off what you've just done the last six months, all that hard work you've put in. This is your time to showcase what you've learned and how you've developed from your BI course to your exam course. You get a little bit less feedback, so you finish your lesson and the examiners are a bit more, OK, next. I don't really know how you're getting on until the end when you get given your, your pass or your fail. For all the courses that I went on, I try and think about the end result, so especially the BI course. The end result is if you pass, you're then working with real students. So rather than aiming to pass the course, I always think about aiming to be as best an instructor I can be, because then if I do pass, I'm going to be working with real students. What is it like to be a CSI? Keep missing some of my slides. Anyway, what's it like? There's the good and the, I said good, the, the good and the bad. It's not really the bad, it's just the, the different kind of good. Um, the good is you get to spend loads of time on the drop zone, you get to jump lots, you get to meet tons of new people, and you get to help them through their journey of maybe having never jumped before. You can even get some people that have even never been in an aircraft before to being able to do back loops and tracking and have full control in free fall and giving them their A license. So it's really, really rewarding. It can be busy. You can get to the end of the day on a drop zone and you've been on your feet all day. You've been talking, briefing and debriefing and helping students and driving trucks, helping the drop zone. And you look back and you've actually only done two jumps. And you think, oh, I just wanted to work and jump as much as I could. But when you look back at how much you've helped the students, you don't mind so much. It's also a great way of getting stuck in on the drop zone, so you get to start to learn much more about the operation. You have to communicate with the pilots, manifest, drop zone control, the students themselves, so you're really part of the operation, um, which is really helpful for when you go on to progress and wanting to work on other instructor ratings. It's also really challenging. There's lots of problem solving. Saying one thing to one student might mean something totally different to another student. I remember um, seeing a student trying to get kitted up. They had their rig on the bench, they did their chest strap up, and then they were all 
bent in funny shapes trying to get into their rig. So I went over and was like, hang on, let's help. Why have you got your chest strap done up? And they said, well, you said, do your chest strap up first. I was like, that is exactly what I said. I completely understand why you've done what you've done. Um, so sometimes they throw curveballs at you and you have to look back at what you've done and tweak and change it and realize that that might happen again. Um, financial side of being a static line instructor, you don't really get paid much. So it tends to be one of the first things you get into. You don't necessarily have to go down the same route that I did of moving into a caravan in a muddy field and try and do it all day, every day. A lot of people do it as another part of their skydiving hobby. So coming at weekends and helping students. But it does give you loads of experience which will help in the long run. So I know these are on Vic and Beck's side as well. So the qualities of a good instructor. This is a good place to start. If you're interested in becoming an instructor, taking a look at this list and seeing where you fit into it. You don't necessarily have to have all of them right now, but knowing the bits that you need to work on uh, or the bits that you've already got are uh, going to help. So if you think you're any of those, then that sounds like you're already on your way to being an instructor. Cool. There we go.